Make your day richer than it was before. Got some good times knocking upon your front door. It's the Richard Wilmore Show. Congratulations on the um, on the special. I watched it last night. It's hilarious. Oh. oh, thanks, man. I appreciate it. It's Clark in here! <laughs> Folks, this joke's gonna crush. Looks like somebody's got a death wish. And I'm gonna grant that wish. Cause I'm a big fairy. <laughs> it's my special, why don't you pick it up for me? I was informed before the show that we are uh, over capacity here, so I am going to have to kick uh, one person out. Right, yes, yeah, you. Yes, if you could just head out. Interrupt the special. Eh, probably not. No. <laughs> so how do, how did that come about? How do you how does one get a an Amazon uh, special? <laughs> well, it's easier than you think. All right, let me so, grab my pen and figure that out. <laughs> um, well, let's see. I just um, you know it's something I wanted to do. I wanted to do it on my own. Um, and I mean, I obviously, I'd love to have a Netflix special, but that wasn't coming down the pipeline. So, um, yeah, I've been doing this 20 years, and I wanted to do a special, and I kind of wanted to do it on my own terms. So, rented a theater in North Hollywood uh, through my uh, improv group uh, and uh, shot it. I have a friend who, who directed it, Matthew Gosson, who's done a lot of my, uh, like, our, our, web video, our, our web series videos. And... Um, just decided to uh, figure out how to release it on my own. So I went through this company called Distriber. Um, and it's a, uh, it's a company that sort of helps you with the process of going through iTunes and Amazon. How long uh, have you not been in Milwaukee? Uh, I, moved to, uh, I moved to LA back in 2001. Right. So uh, it's been 16 years out here. And how long until I get rid of this ridiculous Wisconsin accent? <laughs> I don't know when that happens. I always people always say I have it still, and I uh, I never notice it. I don't I don't either until I watched your special, and then I instantly start talking like that as well. Like you definitely still have it, and mine comes out a lot once I'm talking to my brother, like my brothers who are still in Wisconsin. Right. And then all of a sudden you're the Uber of the world, and you can't get rid of it. I don't think. But it's really like it's funny when you go back to Wisconsin, then you talk to people, and then you're like, "Oh my god, yeah, <laughs> that is that yeah. is an accent!" Yeah. Like, and I, it, I, it, I grew up in northern Wisconsin, so it's, right. it's even more pronounced and more ridiculous. Um, 
where suddenly you are like, oh, God, I can't believe that accent that they have <laughs> when you really have it yourself. Where did you grow up? I grew up, like, almost the UP, almost Minnesota. Oh, wow. Yeah. What, what city? Uh, do you know Ashland? Yeah, yeah. I okay. grew up, like, 20 minutes south of there. Okay. So, like, yeah. So, so what's the city? Mellon. Mellon? Yeah. <laughs> Home of Copper Falls State Park. Yeah, we're so proud. Melon. Yeah, a whole oh. 700 people. And then I graduated uh, high school and went to UW-Milwaukee. Okay. That's what brought me there. I actually just booked a gig in, uh, I mean, I don't think this is near, it might be near you, I don't know, but it's in Garland, Texas. Uh, I guess it's like an hour south of Dallas. It's uh, some new theater they just built out there. Oh, cool. When are you doing that? Uh, March 31st. Okay. Dallas is like four and a half hours from us. So oh, okay. it turns so out Texas about- is huge. <laughs> and it takes you forever to get anywhere. But whatever. Uh, yeah, talk about your, your tour coming up or your tour that you're on. I mean, I've never uh, saw myself as like on tour. It's just sort of like I get these dates and sometimes they group together and sometimes they don't. Um, That's why I called my special outraged because everyone's just every day there's something new that people are outraged about and and you're just always dealing with with that. It's it's just like, I don't know. I don't have that much outrage in me. I don't know. I think it's, uh, yeah, I, I, it must be difficult now and you've probably experienced this too, like you can't do anything anymore because there are a million eyes on you. Right. You got to be careful what you post. You can't reply to things. You can't counter argue with the political correctness or otherwise you're a jerk. (laughs) Like there's no discussion. There's no dialogue. It's just you're either on one side or the other and that's it. I mean, this has got to, something's going to happen and I don't know what it's going to be, but it, it's getting, it's getting a little, I, I get a little scared about it, but, but Robin, uh, well, how is that with, with writing comedy? Are you still in the space where comedians, I don't even feel like comedians have that free range anymore to make fun of people or to be funny. You also have to be so careful. Yeah. I mean, I'm not that political, but, uh, I did. I do have like a joke about. Uh, I, I just mentioned Trump, and I mentioned the joke that like I didn't know what the word MAGA meant. Like on Twitter, people would say like hashtag MAGA, and it means make America great again. And I, my joke is that I just thought it was something obnoxious. Trump supporters yelled at you after they insulted you. Like, <laughs> they'd be like, "Sorry, Snowflake, Trump's president now." MAGA! And. Uh, <laughs> And it's very, very, uh, you know, it's not offensive. It really is just sort of making fun of myself, sort of. But uh, as soon as I mentioned Trump, you can instantly, you can feel the room get divided. Like, it's like, it's like bringing up abortion or something. It's like immediately the audience picks a side, arms get crossed, and everyone starts to... Stiffen up get, and, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's, <laughs> it's worse than any real joke you can do is just to say Trump. And I swear to, like, if, you are, if you're in a crowded bar and you say the word Trump, everything will stop. Like, <laughs> it's amazing. It's, it's frightening. It's a fun time to be alive, isn't it? <laughs> fun, scary, yeah, the but, apocalypse. I mean, the way we're going, we won't be alive for that much longer anyway, so what's the difference? Right, right. Um, talk about, like what it's been like growing up in Wisconsin and moving to California and kind of the career you've created for yourself. Like, what's that been like? Like, um, I think it was, uh, I, I was, I don't know. I, I it was something like I, I didn't move till I was 29. So I, um, I was kind of like, if I don't do this now, I'm going to regret it. I'm always going to wonder what if, And uh, definitely moving from being sort of the big fish in the small pond to being the small fish in the big pond was was definitely sort of an eye opener for me. Uh, But when I first moved out here, I had a lot of things happen. I got on a couple TV shows. I won like this comedy contest. So like things sort of like every year, like something happened, 
for me. And I was like, oh, this is like, this is good. Like I'm building, building blocks. And then I did the Montreal Comedy Festival and it didn't go well for me for whatever reason. And uh, that was definitely sort of like where the panic set in, like, oh my God, like now I'm not the darling of the industry. And now I'm like just a guy. And uh, that just sort of got, uh, that was, that made it very difficult to kind of, uh, to have to, to sort of feel like, oh, like, as quickly as it comes to you, it, they can quickly abandon you as well. Like, so as quickly as the industry can embrace you, it, it, just as quickly they can like give up on you and sort of move on from you. So that's um, that's sort of something I, I that had to uh, I had to adjust to and sort of like work my way through it and not panic and just kind of like. I still had a lot of people that were in my corner and and sort of recognizing the good people in my corner that are are supporting me and helping me and not worrying about the people that kind of abandoned me and, and just <clears throat> sticking with those people. What are so, you uh, excited about in 2018 or four? What are you doing? What are you up to? Uh, I have a, I just shot a little part on uh, HBO's Room 104, the Duplass Brothers uh, TV show. It's my first uh, HBO, first uh, premium cable show. So I'm excited about that. I, I get to say the F word on HBO. <laughs> so that's something proud for my Catholic uh-huh. family to enjoy. <laughs> Um, so I'm excited about that. And, and, uh, you know, obviously the special continuing to push that. And now, um, my wife and I, were going to go get back to my web series, our web series that we shoot the Clarks. Um, we have a couple episodes we've written. So and we kind of took a break from it last year because of the stand up special. So the Clarks, and then I'm just trying to write more. Uh, I was, <laughs> I was working as an improv teacher at an Orthodox Jewish school, uh, for the last two years, I was sort of a part-time job, and I, I left there this year because the kids were uh, maniacs. Uh, so, um, so now I have more time to spend writing and that sort of thing. So that's that's what I'm and spending time with Abigail here. They, yes, it looks like they uh, need a little attention, perhaps. <laughs> She's depressed. Yeah, uh, poor thing. You walked away from her for 13 minutes. How dare I, you! Do you have um, any words of advice for that middle America kid who wants to do something like you're doing? Um, I think I, I wrote a blog about like 10 things I learned from doing stand up or from doing comedy, like what things I learned. And, and I think that's one of the thing is, is, is don't try to fit into groups. Like if, if there's a group that like, for me, it was like, I wasn't an alt comedian. So I was never embraced by that community. And I kind of wanted to be, and I wasn't. And there's no sense in fighting. Like, if either they want you or they don't want you. And if they don't, then move on from it and focus on the people that do want to work with you. So, I think that's one thing: is is choose your own path. Don't 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 feel like you have to do certain things. Like, you know, now it's everyone needs to get a Netflix special. I, I don't think you need to do that. I think, especially now, it requires more work. But doing stuff independently you don't have to rely on the industry anymore. I, I feel like people need to start learning that, like stop letting them be in charge of everything and be independent. I, I think just as a, as a, as, as a country, we need to realize that like we, these politicians don't control us. Like we we're in charge of our fate and it's like, we can all be good people and, or we can all panic every time Trump tweets something, you know, it's like, don't, just be your own person. And I, I think that's going to go much, take you much further in life than, than just sort of following the crowd. So I think just be an individual and, and trust your instincts, you know, and, and always be willing to learn. I think that's, those are the things that I've learned. That's awesome. Uh, thanks for taking the time. Thank you, man. Make your day rich. Time's knocking upon your front door. It's the Richard Wilmore Show.